Hi everyone, Russell here again. So today I'll be doing a review on my Honda Talon, which has over 10,000 miles on it. So I'll tell you some of the things I really like and some of the problems I've experienced. So maybe this will help you decide if you want to buy one or not. And if you do have one, what you might potentially expect uh, through your first 10,000 miles. So today's review will be of my 2019 1000R uh, Honda Talon. So I don't have the live valve model and um, I have the non-California uh, model as well. So the first issue I think everybody should be aware of is the air filtration system, okay? The, the Honda filter works absolutely great. Uh, the only problem is, is where it's sucking uh, fresh air from is just a, a huge uh, dust vacuum. So you can kind of plan on changing your filter if you're in dusty conditions about every three to 500 miles. Okay, so I highly recommend getting the SMB particle separator that Honda offers as an accessory and you should be able to easily get 2000 miles. I know some people are running like a little pre-filter. I've seen people run a snorkel where it pops up into the back of the bed or just simply putting a pre-filter on the inside. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of that because you still have to clean that all the time and uh, it's just reducing your airflow for engine performance. So I know some people are gonna be like, oh, I have thousands of miles with the pre-filter, but um, that's just not an option I would go for. So here's what it looks like inside the air box. Uh, that is the OEM filter. I know some people are running uh, different filters, ones that you can clean, or simply just putting a pre-filter on the back side of that. Um, I also don't recommend that because if, if you're running a different filter and you're getting more miles out of it uh, between cleaning or replacement, that probably means it's letting more dust through. So as far as filtering out dust, um, I am very, very happy with the, the, um, the OEM filter. Uh, like I said, in my opinion, go for the particle separator. This is like a $20,000 machine, spend four, 450 bucks and get a particle separator. So here's my particle separator and what I highly recommend. Um, so I do have the rear panel in, as you can see, and I have it mounted. Um, I have it mounted high enough where it's just below the roof, but you can still see out the, the, the back panel. So the bad thing about this particle separator is, is it's very noisy. So I do recommend having the rear panel in there if possible, just to cut down the noise. But if you wanna get 2000 miles out of an air filter and not worry about it, Definitely go with the particle separator. All right, the next issue I've had is uh, replacing the front uh, drive line or propeller shaft is what Honda calls it. And I'll briefly explain. So as you can see, here's the entire front drive line. Um, actually, so this would be the, the front side, which has a couple O-rings that go on it when you slide it in the front diff and then that just slides on the transfer case or the sub transmission, what Honda calls it. So you can see there's two U-joints. And uh, I had this fell two times before I had the turbo kit on. So if you're wondering if that made a difference, I have about 3,000 miles without the turbo kit and about 7,000 miles with the turbo. So, um, and I have over 7,000 miles on the current drive line. But I'll briefly explain to you the issue I had. So you can see there's the U-joints. I actually have an extra U-joint laying around. So what's going on is these uh, retaining clips go right there. And what is happening, um, these retaining clips are falling off, which um, they are on the inside. So my first failure was actually the front U-joint. Uh, and then once that retaining clip comes off, the cup works its way out. And then you're going to have like a bang, 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 bang noise uh, because the drive shafts are going to be flopping around and hitting on the retaining loop in it. Okay, the second time it failed, and keep in mind, Honda replaced the entire drive line under warranty. The second time was actually the rear joint. Same thing, the retaining clip came out, the cup came off, and uh, and both times it's always like a thousand miles away from home. So now I just have this extra drive line that I, I carry around with me. So um, if that happens, I can just swap it out real quick. So I have seen some people put some tack welds on the back of the cup. Um, I guess that is working. I haven't tried it, so I can't say. I would actually prefer uh, putting a little tack weld 
on the retaining clips um, so it doesn't quite heat up the, the cup, but um, I have 7,000 miles on the current drive line um, as is, no modifications, no welds, no tack welds, nothing like that. So I don't know if there's some bad batches from the factory or what's going on, but um, so I've replaced this drive line twice within a 300 mile period actually. Um, about 3,000 miles and 3,300 miles is the two times they were replaced. So um, that's just an issue I've had that it's something you can look out for. So a very uh, common issue that I see a lot online is the front differential seal for the front axles leaking. So the, the seal is a couple bucks and I see a lot of people within, you know, 500 miles having a leaking front diff. Okay. So let's just take a look. Um, I carry a couple of those extra seals around. So um, you can see, yeah, mine has leaked a little bit. Um, it's, there was a small leak about 5,000 miles ago, never changed it and just kept driving uh, and it stopped leaking on its own. So if you get like a small drip, um, there's a good chance that it's gonna stop leaking, but it's also covered under warranty. So something I don't like about the Honda Talon, and I've fixed the problem now, but just if you're going to uh, buy one, take this into consideration, the rear suspension is, is not a very good design. It's very rough riding. Um, if you wanna do any type of uh, whoops on it, you're gonna get rear bucking where your back end actually comes off the ground. Um, if you hit certain types of jumps, it's going to throw you into a nosedive and, and you could even possibly land on the nose. So, um, I've fixed that and there's a, I have a separate video I can put it in the description but I fixed these issues by adding that spare tire um, shock therapy springs uh, right improvement system I also added the Fox IQS system which if you're not familiar with that you can go you know shift on the fly between a uh, soft medium and firm I use that thing hundreds of times per day that's probably the best investment I've made on my side by side absolutely love it and then the other thing this isn't a Honda issue but it's a fox issue so let's take a look here is the reservoir cap for the the fox 2.5 shocks a very 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 common issue with this is bleeding off pressure okay so typically um the reservoir cap is right here on the bottom i have some aftermarket ones with the schrader valve so i can adjust pressure on them um, according to shock therapy, you should be running 200 pounds of nitrogen on all four corners. That's what I've been running at for thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. Um, everything is working very well. Um, this factory reservoir cap, as you can see, you kind of have to stick a needle in there. Um, all of mine leaked off, so they were down below 100 pounds. The shocks weren't working right. It was making her ride rougher. So I added these reservoir caps um, and so, you know, a couple times a year, I'll just uh, twist that out, um, hook up my pressure gauge to it, check the pressure, make sure it's still at 200 and they've been holding. So not necessarily a Honda issue, but the Fox 2.5 shocks are, are known for leaking off. So just keep an eye on that. So a small complaint of mine is the fuel tank size. Um, it's just over seven gallons. Uh, there is an aftermarket option out there. I think it's like four or 500 bucks where you can uh, swap it out and have 10 gallons um, under there, which would be great. Um, I just have two three and a half gallon tanks uh, mounted on the back. So uh, I didn't opt to put in the larger fuel tank. But uh, in my opinion, it needs to be at least 10 gallons and there is an option to upgrade that if, if you so desire. So something that I've replaced under warranty is both rear axles, okay? Um, I do think the, the factory axles are very good, okay? The, the number one reason that these need to be replaced are not because of quality, it's because of people driving this on asphalt, okay? That's a, a rear locking differential, okay? So anytime that you make a corner on asphalt, that means one tire has to spin and something has to give. And so do not drive the Honda Talon on asphalt unless you want to have axle problems. You know, so I see some people getting like super heavy duty axles. Okay, that's fine, right? If you're driving on asphalt, still some that tire has to spin or it's gonna cause some undue pressure. So let's say your axle doesn't give, it might be your, your rear differential. 
okay? And the rear differential is like five times more expensive than the axle, okay? The other reason that you might have some axle problems is jumping. So most of you know that when you're jumping, you know, your nose, your nose dive and stuff can be uh, controlled by throttle. So a lot of people will be full throttle right until they hit the ground to prevent that, to prevent the momentum shift and create a nose dive by letting off in midair. So when you're landing, when you're jumping and you're landing full throttle, 40, 50, 70 miles an hour, whatever your tires are doing, and it hits the ground, that's causing a lot of pressure if you're still maintaining full throttle once you make contact. So that's probably the two most common issues. Like I said, I'm happy with the quality of the factory axle, um, but those two things are probably going to be the most common reason that you have axle problems. Stay off of asphalt and be careful on uh, jumping and landing. So here's what your rear axle looks like. And this is the inboard side. So uh, this is the side that goes into your rear differential, okay? So typically what happens, and the easiest way to identify that you have rear axle problems is when you turn right or left, you're gonna hear a clicking noise coming from the back. And what causes that, so right here, we still have, we have the bearings in there. Um, you're going to get pitting right here on the edges of those, okay? And from the ball bearing. And so I just carry a couple of these in case I get into that uh, situation where I can swap them out. Um, keep in mind that you're gonna need a couple bands. Um, there is a special tool, um, which I just swing by the dealership and use theirs real quick uh, to put those bands on to hold the rubber boots. But make sure, you know, I carry a couple of these, two of these around and I have uh, two large bands, two small bands for the axle in case I need to replace them. Um, something to keep in mind, uh, I rate the brakes on the Honda Talon as above average. Um, there's definitely room for improvement and probably for 90% of drivers, they're going to be good enough. They're extremely expensive to replace. The brake pads are, you know, several hundred bucks. Uh, but if you want to push it to the max or you spend a lot of time on the racetrack, you're going to have to upgrade the brakes on this. So the only issue I've had with running these larger 32 inch tires is I personally believe the power steering is a little bit underpowered. And so keep in mind, I have over 10,000 miles. I haven't replaced the power steering, but I've had this happen a couple times. And, and what it'll do is um, the power steering light will come on the dash. My power steering stops working. Um, I turn the engine off, turn it back on. It, it goes again, there's no problem. So I feel like the power steering is a little bit underpowered for, for large, heavy tires. So. Um, I have 10,000 miles, but just, just something to, to keep in mind that you might run into. I see a ton of questions about tires online, okay? So I run 32s all the way around. I personally am not a fan of wheel spacers. I will not run wheel spacers. I know a lot of people do, and that's fine. Um, I run different offsets. So to me, the most important thing is running. I run a six, point, uh, six plus one offset on the front, a four plus three offset on the rear. And so if you're not familiar with the Talon, the, the rear is actually narrower than the front. So you have to run different offsets or some people run the same offset with the wheel spacers on the rear. Okay, um, most, most of the arguments I see about wheel spacers is, oh, well, I can rotate the tires. So what I personally do is when my tread depth is at 50% on the rear, um, I actually have a tire machine here in my garage. I'll just pull those tires off and put them on the front. Okay, that's one rotation. So these tires, on average, these EFXs will last about 5,000 miles. So I, I just have to swap them one, once and that's it. I see a ton of questions about wheels. So I am running 14 inch wheels, that's possible. Um, they don't rub, I haven't had any issues in 7,000 miles. Um, so things that you need to take into consideration when you're buying your tire to see what is best for you, okay? So the more tire you have, that tire section right there, that is a shock absorber. Okay, so 14 inch um, wheels with 32 inch tires is going to absorb a lot of the roughness of the road, okay? So the larger the wheel you get and the smaller the tire you get is a rougher ride. Okay, so there's pros and cons to that. If you want a smooth ride, or if you really want to drop your pressure down to like six pounds of pressure to do rock crawling, this is a great setup with the bead locks. Okay, if you want to do higher speed race stuff where you don't want the sidewall of your tire flexing on corners, then you need to go with a taller wheel 
and you will have less rubber, okay? So when you go to buy a tire, ask yourself what you wanna do. Do you want a smooth ride? Go with 14 inch wheels. Do you want um, high speed, uh, low flex, rougher riding? Then go with a larger wheel, okay? So th I'm very happy with the 14 inch wheels and the 32 inch tires. So a very common question is live valve or non-live valve when you're buying your Talon, okay? So when I bought mine, live valve was not an option, so that's why I have this. I installed the Fox IQS system so I could adjust my suspension on the fly. If I had to do it over again and I knew live valve was coming out, I probably would have waited. Um, so if you want extra control of your suspension, and, and, and in my opinion, this is the difference between having a crash or not because I adjust mine, you know, probably over a hundred times in a single day. You know, if you're on a straight rough uh, road and you know, I'll have it in soft or nasty corners coming up, I'll flip it into firm and it makes a huge difference on handling. So if you go into a corner on soft, you could roll much, much easier than if you flip it into firm. So in my opinion, go for the live valve. If you don't have the live valve, consider getting the Fox IQS system from Shock Therapy. They're the only ones that can upgrade that for you. And uh, I believe it's it works on a 2.5 shock or larger. So I don't think the IQS will work on the X model because that's a 2.0 shock. So if you want more control of your suspension and adjust on the fly, the main difference between the Fox IQS and the, the Honda Live Valve is the Fox IQS is all manual. There's no computer input, okay? So um, the Live Valve, you know, if, if you're locking up the brakes, it's gonna automatically stiffen the front suspension to prevent nosedive or things along those lines or cornering, it's gonna stiffen the outside. Okay, the Fox IQS is all manual. I'm just flipping between soft, medium, and firm. So in my opinion, I would go for the live valve. If you don't have a live valve and you want some adjustment, definitely go for the IQS system. I absolutely love it. One advantage of the IQS system is Fox, uh, Shock Therapy does give you a lifetime warranty on that. So if you have any issues, you can send it back to them. Whereas your live valve is just gonna be whatever warranty you have. So just take that into consideration. I absolutely love adjusting my suspension. I do it so many times per day. I've seen a few things online about people trying to avoid the California model. So if I were to do it over again, I would go out of my way and buy a Honda Talon in California because there's uh, there's there's an advantage to it, okay? The, the California models have the EVAP system. Why is the EVAP system important? Well, it eliminates fuel smell. So if you leave it in the garage, you're not gonna have fuel smell. In your cargo trailer, um, in the toy hauler, if you don't want fuel smell, the EVAP system is going to prevent that. Okay, they're the same price in California or not. As far as performance goes, they're exactly the same. Emissions are the same. It just has that EVAP system. The other advantage to the EVAP system is there's two vacuum ports on the throttle body um, from the factory. So for mine, I had to actually drill a hole into the th throttle body and add a vacuum to it. So. Um, for me, I would go for the live valve and I would go for a California model. So I'm very happy with the front suspension on the Talon. It, it's above average uh, from the factory. Um, I've upgraded, I have high clearance A-arms and I have the, the shock therapy system, which makes it absolutely phenomenal. Um, overall, in my opinion, the Honda Talon is the best all around machine. Um, now, our, some machines are going to be better on the racetrack, some machines are better in the dunes, some machines, uh, you know, might excel in other areas, drag racing whatsoever. But this DCT is what sets everything apart. And why do I love the DCT? Because Honda is bringing technology from higher areas down to the side-by-side -side market. And in my opinion, other side-by-sides are bringing snowmobile technology upwards. So, you know, as soon as like a Indy car or a Formula One, NASCAR or a Baja truck, trophy trucks, as soon as they start throwing a CVT in there, then you'll convince me that a CVT is better than, than a direct drive transmission. So I absolutely love the DCT. This thing is phenomenal for rock crawling. It does great on the racetrack. Um, since I have the turbo kit, I also have launch mode on there. Um, the other big difference is power loss. So you're going to look at, 
you're looking at 11 to 15 percent loss from the crank to the hubs with the dct and on a cbt you're looking at 20 to 30 percent uh from from the crank to the wheels so in my opinion honda has just taken the side-by-side -side market to the next level um you know there's tons of machines with cbts it's not like they're absolutely horrible but in my opinion the honda talon is the best all-around option out there hands down i have over 10,000 miles on this have not had one single issue with my transmission of course i haven't had to replace any belts i don't have to worry about belt temperature i don't have to worry about water getting into my belts um, i just simply drive it i don't worry about pulling like i pulled a pickup truck for five six seven miles um, didn't worry about smoking a belt um, i absolutely love the honda town so i know i pointed out a bunch of bad things but overall, this is a great, solid machine. I've had a couple issues in 10,000 miles, and not many people can say that, especially with other manufacturers. Something I see often online and I don't fully understand is people trying to grease their wheel bearings, okay? These are sealed wheel bearings. I have over 10,000 miles on them. I have never greased them. So I don't know why people are pulling out the wheel bearings, greasing them, and putting them back in, okay? Wheel bearings for these are only about $30 a corner. Um, they're not super expensive. So my advice to you is don't grease them because grease is just a dirt magnet and then it's going to suck that dust into the grease and then possibly suck it into your bearings. Uh, so um, just run them until the bearings are out. I mean, uh, $30, 30 to replace them is, is, is not expensive. So that's just uh, another one of my opinions on, on the wheel bearings. I also had an issue with my talon when it was brand new where the alignment was completely off. Um, it was towed way out and the inside of the wheel was actually rubbing on the A-arm on the front passenger side. So um, I'll put a link in the description on a video to show you how to check and align your Honda Talon. So if you're buying a brand new one, take a half an hour and make sure the alignment's good on the front end.